In 2015, I've made a radical decision. I was studying law in university. I was my second year and uh, I was not really happy with the prospects of my life. I was looking at my mom, which is a lawyer, and she's drowned in files and meetings and calls. You can never get in touch with her. She's busy from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. She's like the most busiest person. And I was thinking like, if I keep going in this way, if I keep going to school and if I study to get this degree, I'm gonna end up like my mom. So I've decided to drop off from university. Obviously, my parents wanted to kill me. They weren't really excited to hear that. And I decided to move to London. I had no idea what will happen there. I was a foreigner, my language is not that great. But I said, you know what? If I'm not gonna do it now, then when? You know, in the worst case scenario, I come back after one or two years and I continue my studies. The reason why I left was, yeah, to see what's gonna happen if I go there, but I also wanted to buy a sports car. Okay, that was my dream back in the day. And my plan was to work seven days a week, 16 hours a day, to collect all the possible cash I can, save up as much as I can, uh, have almost no expenses, eat only, I don't know, rice and tuna, then come back home with a sports car so I can flex on people. Okay, that was my goal when I was 18, 19 or 20, I don't remember exactly. So I end up in London, my friend was a manager and he gave me a job at a coffee shop and I started working and I was working hard, really hard, you have no idea. I was, I never had a job before in my entire life and I was working 16 hours a day. My feet were hurting like hell, my hands were burned from the espresso machine. I was waking up at 5 a.m. to be at the coffee shop at 6 a.m. I'm not a morning person at all. I wasn't even sleeping eight hours a day. I was sleeping maybe four, three hours a day because I was smoking weed and playing FIFA with my body that I was living with. I was a total zombie the entire day. I kept trying to prove myself, you know, I kept trying to like be a better barista, to be a harder worker, to prove myself, you know, that I can get a raise. I was getting paid around five to six pounds an hour, while the minimum wage was seven bucks an hour, seven pounds, you know, so I was, did not have papers. I was like an illegal immigrant, like the proper story, you know what I mean? I was looking at the people that I was working with, you know, none of them, made me excited for the prospects of my career, right? I remember there was this guy, his name is Rob. He was like 32 years old. He had three kids or something, a wife and so on and so forth. And he was the brother of the owner or brother-in-law or something like that. And he was getting paid maybe like eight pounds an hour. And he was working there for like seven years or 10 years, something like that. And that's when I realized this is not for me. I realized that if I keep going in this way, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to get that car because I was working so hard, I was so tired that I had to spend all the money to survive. So I was working to survive. I wasn't using my brain and I knew I was a smart guy. So because I decided that I'm a smart guy, I started thinking about what can I actually learn? What skill can I learn? What is like the best skill for me to learn, to make money without going to university so I can make good money, six figures or more, and also work remotely. My dream was to work from an island. One day I speak with one of the customers. It was like the last day before I quit that job, the first job that I had with those guys. And this guy came every single day. He was a developer that was working at a bank, I think Lloyd's Bank or something like that in the UK. And he told me, bro, you should learn programming. I knew a guy from high school. He was the friend of a friend of mine and he was making bank, making websites. So I was like, okay, why not? So then I go to a bookshop, I think it's called Barnes and Noble, and I bought a book. The book is relevant, it doesn't matter, but that got me started. And I've grinded maybe nine months, 12 months, something like that, until I got my first job. It was a tough journey and it was a journey where I was feeling excited some days, some days I was losing hope, some days I wanted to quit, some days I wanted to go back home to Romania and give up. But for some reason I kept at it. And I coded and I grinded and I finally managed to get a developer job. Okay, it wasn't easy, but I've made it. And since then I moved to that island. I lived there, I've done that. I lived in multiple countries. I have worked for all types of companies. I've built all types of products and 
I've been helping people do exactly the same thing as I did with less effort, less headaches and more structure. And today I want to teach you how to actually get that remote developer job because I realized that there are a few things that you need to understand in order to make this transition and be successful at it, okay? This career change is split into two main parts, I would say. The first part is called the learning phase, okay? And in this learning phase, your entire objective is centered around doing as many reps as possible as you are learning different concepts. And I have integrated this concept in my program without even realizing it. All you have to do in this phase is to take massive action. I cannot sell you a course on how to take massive action. This is up to you, right? But at this point, it's, I would say it's close to irrelevant what you're doing as long as you keep learning a new concept every other day and you try to internalize said concept. This is the point where you kind of have to discover the map. Imagine you are in GTA, right? You arrive in GTA, if I'm correct, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. So you are in GTA, you are this person somewhere on the map and you can only see maybe around like, I don't know, five miles around you, right? Because you've never discovered the entire map. So your goal at this stage as a, an aspiring developer is to see as much as possible from this map. As you start out, you learn some HTML, some CSS, maybe some JavaScript, and you think you are a king, but you're not, okay? Hold your horses, chill out. You have a lot to learn. In this phase, I would say this phase should last six months. If you are very aggressive, and I would suggest you to be very aggressive with it, this phase should last six months or so, maybe nine months. If you work like a really tough job and you are working, I don't know, crazy shifts and whatnot. And what's important at this stage is not only to be aggressive in um, your accumulation of data sets for your skill set, but you have to make coding a priority. You have to eat the frog first. So what I was doing when I was a barista, I was working hard, blah, 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 blah. I was working eight hours a day after I changed my job and I decided that I want to become a programmer. And then straight as I was coming home, I was going to code. And then I was coding and coding and coding until I was giving up. For you, maybe you don't have the luxury to go for eight hours a day. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have responsibilities, maybe you have to do other stuff, but try to make coding a priority and try to make other stuff fit around your life. And this is a quote that comes from one of the students from the program. She said that you need to make coding the main thing and then every single thing should be centered around that. You have to make space for coding because if it's important for you, if a career change is important for you, that's not gonna happen by mistake. You have to be intentional about it, like super intentional, intense. You should say no to many things. And this is hard and this is discipline, okay? You need to remove maybe people, maybe activities, and you have to figure out how you can focus only on your job so you can make money and on skill acquisition. I mean, it sounds super easy and simple, it is, but obviously there are levels to this game, okay? But just for you to have an idea, this is how you start. You have to discover the map, you need to discover the skills that you need to learn, and you need to practice them as much as possible, and you should increase the difficulty of the skills that you are trying to gather, okay? The difficulty of, of your applications, the difficulty of your websites, you should try to think about coding like you're going to the gym. If you do the same weights every single time and the same reps, you will not grow. You need to increase the weight, the reps, the intensity. That's the first phase, learning, okay? The second phase is called the grind. So the grind is when you discover the entire map, okay? So imagine you are in GTA and you keep driving around, you know exactly where everything is, or you have an idea that this thing should be here, this thing should be here, this thing should be here. Now in the grind phase, what you do is you take all the skills that you have accumulated, the base, okay, the foundation, the thicker the foundation is, the better your grind phase will be, okay? Because if you are very weak in, for example, JavaScript, your React is gonna be weak. If you are weak in React, well, you cannot build really interesting applications and so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure that in the learning phase, 
you have covered the basis for every single thing that you need to know okay this is very very important i am urging you to really pay attention to your fundamentals and really try to understand concepts like you know building a website can you actually build a beautiful website building functional to do app, understanding how to manipulate data these are very important concepts and I would suggest you to look into them at some point. These are things that I cover in my mentorship program. You have this basis covered and then you go into the grind phase. In the grind phase, as I mentioned, you have to build something big, something of meaning. What most people do wrong is that they finish their learning phase and instead of going into the grinding phase for a few months, they go straight into job applications like they start to apply like maniacs and it's okay to apply i was applying straight away when i first did my when i did my first hello world that's fine but they have the expectation to actually get an interview and to actually get a job and they put together a portfolio they put together the applications that they've built and then they apply and they hear crickets well that happens because they are not good enough they haven't done the grind. The grind is where you build something of meaning, something big, something complex, something interesting, something that solves a problem, okay? And that application, that project that you'll be building for like three months, four months, six months. Think about this, a bootcamp is typically three months where you go through all this process, okay, at a very rapid pace. And I'm telling you to grind on an application for like three to six months. Try to understand why I'm saying that. Because if you spend three to six months building one thing, imagine you're building a sand castle. You can get like a little bucket and then you put some sand in and then you put it on the beach and then you have a little castle, right? Nothing impressive, nothing to brag about. What you need to build is like a fortress made out of sand and you'll notice that if you have the same approach as with building the basic sand castle with the bucket well that fortress that huge castle that you want to build is going to fall apart that's when you learn and that's when you get the experience because that's what companies that's what recruiters that's what hiring managers are looking for people that saw bullshit as simple as that people that saw problems People that know how to prevent problems. And how can you do that if you've never been grinding on something big, a real product? And this is where most juniors mess up. They don't want to do that because it's too complicated or that's what they think. They actually never really thought about it. In this period of grind, you'll experience the most amount of growth. If you have the opportunity to work in a team with two or three other members, you will learn so much. You will learn that coding by yourself is different than coding in a team. You will learn that what you do is important and you have to be responsible. You will learn the dynamic of a team. You will learn that someone slacks off and you need to learn how to pull them or tell them to piss off. Okay? You might have to do a task that you don't like and you need to spend maybe two or three weeks to do it. How would you push through it? Can you come up with alternatives to fix that? Are you gonna quit and be a bitch and let your team fail because of you? These are things that you can only learn by grinding on a big project. And this is the approach from my mentorship program. First, you learn. You learn the basic concepts from as many different angles as possible so you can pretty much know them by heart. And then, and only then, when you're ready, then you'll start grinding on a big app. And that's gonna give you the experience because you'll have exposure to the same thing over and over and over again. There is a reason why bodybuilders do the bench press <laughs> pretty much every week for years. They repeat the same exercise because that exercise is important and is the same with coding. Understand your basic concepts so well that you can not even have to think about them, but you can just, boom, spit out the solution as fast as possible. So this is how it works. This is how you get a remote developer job. Obviously, then you have to start applying, prepping for interviews and so on and so forth. But if I can condense my entire experience into what, 18 minutes? This is what it boils down to, okay? And if you want help with this and you don't wanna waste your time, like most people, 12, 24, 36, 48 months, and then go in on Reddit and saying web development is dead, when they have never done the grind, you can look at their portfolios, you'll see what I'm talking about. Instead of doing that, you can apply for my mentorship where I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. 
If you want to check it out and see that this is a legit thing, we have free courses as well for you in there. Check out the second link in the description. So that's me and that's how you get the remote developer job. 